letting everybody know that I'm starting my live session. And um, today we're continuing artist talk, as always. Today we have a new guest. It's Franco Fazzoli, better known as Jazz. He's a Barcelona-based painter, street artist, ecologist, and sculptor who was born and raised in Buenos Aires. Inspired by Argentinian culture, Franco has been developing his unique technique by making murals look like they are painted with watercolor. Combating minotaurs has become his signature element across all mediums. And that his mediums are collages, paintings, and sculptures. I'm very cu curious to know their meaning and to hear Franco's story of success in art. Let's find out it together. I will connect now to Franco. I hope he's online. Meanwhile, hello to all my friends. <laughs> yeah miss you all i hope to see you somewhere <laughs> once the lockdown is lifted it's getting strict in some countries again okay reading franco hello Hello. Hi, Franco. How's it going? Very good. Thank you for joining my artist talk, talk live project. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to yes. be here. Where are you now at the moment? Oh, finally, I'm in Barcelona after uh, a crazy, crazy adventure of being uh, in the United States for uh, seven months, uh, trapped because of COVID in, in a part. Wow. Uh, also, I yes, yeah, I, I was, heard you've been locked in Charlotte, in Charlotte, uh, USA. We were presenting yeah. into Mrs. Exhibition. So, what happened to it? I mean, I, I've been I've been invited uh, for participating in a residency, the McCall uh, McCall Residency for oh, Art yeah, and Innovation. Central for Innovation, yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. So I I fly there on January, and um, I was I was during the residency for three months. The, the idea of the residency was for four months, but uh, right in the last So month, can you explain uh, us the idea of the residency? How does it work for yeah, those who doesn't know? I mean, uh, our residencies that are located everywhere in many different countries and uh, every residency has uh, different profiles and different st structures. In this case, the, um, the, McCall, the McCall residency for our own innovation, it's uh, such an amazing spot because it's um, it's an old church from the 19th century that in the 80s was uh, transformed as an as a art residency supported by uh, local, local collectors from Charlotte. And uh, those, those residency invites or you apply for uh, participate. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, I, I applied for this residency because of the facilities that they have. Um, they have a uh, sculpture studio, ceramics, ceramic studios, printmaking studios. And because mm -hmm. I am an artist that I'm really interested in the, in, the, in the process of working, especially in using different languages, uh, I, I, I no doubt and apply. And I was lucky enough to be selected. And uh, yeah, since January, I was one of the six residences, uh, residents mm -hmm. that I've been mm -hmm. working there. So you move to the city, they give you mm -hmm. a, an apartment. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you, you, live, you live in the community and you full-time working in the facilities. So, so how, was, how many pieces did you make and how many pieces uh, you had to leave? I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it depends of you, depends of the, mm -hmm. of the project that you, that you show. In my, in my case, I've been, I've been working in many different pieces. Um, mm -hmm. I started to working and doing my own paper during the residency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they doesn't ask you for, uh, for for pieces to live there. Um, if you want, you can donate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, mm -hmm. the case in, it's the case in, the, in, the, in one of the pieces that I have done there because mm -hmm. this was 
it was a massive uh, paper mural that mm -hmm. it was it turns into part of the residency that's why i mm. just put it there because it was massive it was like a maybe uh eight yards by four yards so i'm sure they were very me. happy that you left yeah. something beautiful yeah. for them yeah it was it was an amazing experience only not only so they, they, the, they totally they're supporting the artists by providing them the place mm -hmm. to create with the providing the materials accommodation Exactly. So, because some of the residences, they 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 have the rules that you have to leave certain amount of artworks yeah. or everything that you create there. So I'm very surprised that uh, this McCall Center Art Innovation yeah. is uh, very <laughs> liberal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been participating in another few residences. Every every of them, each of them has a different policy and different rules. Uh, some of them are totally free, some of them you have to pay, some of them they pay you. The, the, resident, the Macau residency was, I, I don't want to put in, in, in scale levels, it's not a one is the best and another, another one is it's bad, it's totally different. But the Macau one, it's very convenient because um, it's really hard to get in, but once that you are selected, I can imagine. They, provide, yeah. they provide you everything. So. They, they cover all your expenses and they have such an amazing facilities for work. That's why I've been like, and I, I think changed. Lo lo yeah, lockdown worked pretty well for you if you had an opportunity to create and mm -hmm. uh, attend the studio, then I think it's, uh, it's not a bad place to be locked down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, you, the, you the end thing, up creating the more. The sad part was that the, we, we lost the last month because of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And mm. uh, also because of that, I get stuck in North, in North Carolina mm. for other five months. So and you were supposed to stay experience? there much, much less, I, was, I assume. Yeah, I supposed to, to, to be back in Barcelona in the, the last days of April. And I just mm. arrived a oh, week wow. ago. Wow, so, you must be very excited to be back home. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm still I'm still organizing and figuring out because, I mean, as everybody, the whole year just collapsed. But in my yeah, case, sure. that I was stuck mm -hmm. in other in another country was uh, such a weird and interesting experience mm -hmm. for me. It was um, was balance between mm -hmm. between good yeah. and very weird. Yeah. So how like how does the current situation affect your vision of the world, the art, and the future? <laughs> And what has changed in your creative approach during this pro uh, pandemic? Yeah, I mean, it's I I I passed through all the all the emotional roller coasters, highs and down. Right right when uh, when the lockdown started, I I feel totally like very very empty in terms of uh, creativity or in, in into my art sub part of uh, of of my way of thinking. Because something that I really enjoy as uh, being an artist is, is the social connection uh, between the people and, uh, and the interaction with our communities. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think this, this lockdown and the whole pandemic just put a stop into that for everybody. Uh, so I lost that part. So for the last, for the first two months of the lockdown, I've been able to, to work or uh, even when I was still keeping a small studio, in the house where I've been locked down in North Carolina, I wasn't able to, I mean, to, to keep working. Mm -hmm. And little by little, I started, some other projects start to happen. Uh, we've been editing a, a book uh, with other friends from Europe and, um, mm -hmm. and South America. What kind of book? Tell us about that. It, I mean, it, it's a book about drawings that, um, mm -hmm. that affect us, all, all this situation. Not, not a specific about the lockdown, it's more a specific about uh, also a subject that I've been working in last year. There is this intimacy that this surrounding, surrounding uh, area that can be your family or your studio. But in my mm -hmm. case, as, as an immigrant, because I live here in Spain, I'm from, originally from Argentina. I was yeah, very- from Buenos Aires, very, beautiful. Uh, very, very south, very south of the world. Um, they are freezing right now there. It's, uh, it's winter down there. So, um, <laughs> so like thinking about that situation as a me, as an immigrant, I was very concentrated in, the, in how I interact with my family, especially through devices, 
uh, through the WhatsApp messages and social media. Mm -hmm. So and and through that, it, my 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 concept of my work make a, a, a flip. Uh, yeah. Compare compare with the work that I've been doing for the last several years. Mm -hmm. And that this was before the pandemic. So during the pandemic, for me, it was like con the, the continuation of this uh, idea, but of mm -hmm. course more concentrated. I mean, really feeling yeah. and the whole world feeling this this kind of same because situation. You, because you you started initially as a graffiti writer in the streets yeah. of Buenos Aires in nineties, and exactly. by developing your skills, you transformed your art into a more complex and figurative style. How mm -hmm. how did this happen? This transition. I mean, the, the transition for me was uh, very natural because uh, I've been, I've been always my, my my life was was marked through uh, through an artist family. So I, I was born and raised in a in a family of artists from all different of. I think uh, your mom is a ceramicist, if I'm not wrong, or. Uh, my mom is an actress. My actress. my yeah. My grandparents are both painters and musicians. So I, I've been grow mm -hmm. up in, into mm -hmm. that. I was in, a, in an art school. I, 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 I study in the that, ceramic That's school. why you graduated in the Institute of Columbus Theater, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Following the steps half of, of my family, mom. <laughs> Yeah, half of my family were been working there. Uh, so for me, it was very mixed kind of growing with arts. It was um, ceramic for one side, uh, stage design in the theater also. But at the same time, I was doing graffiti since I was very young. And, um, and I think these three elements really influence in my work and how then it develops in, especially in the ways that I, that I, that I create my own languages, that it's at least 50% 50, 50 based in the process that I use, like the materials, the scale, mm -hmm. and also the context. So uh, like so what graffiti, inspired you yeah, so what inspired you to push the boundaries and try another medium format from mural, murals to paintings and collages and sculptures? It's all so yeah. diverse. I mean, most of, most of them, it's, it's curiosity. And also, it's, um, it's this kind of uh, claustrophobic feeling of be locked down in a specific, uh, in a specific way of being an artist, you know, like... Uh, I, I really interest in the different profiles of being an artist and how your career could be could be built into that. So I I I never been too scared in try different materials and and different languages. Yeah, because you use like really amazing materials. You use petrol. You yeah. use uh, tar, <laughs> spray paint. You make sculpture from. Uh, uh, ceramic, bronze, you use glass, yeah. paper, the structures. <laughs> yeah, it's a and lot. now I'm very, it's quite a I'm lot. very deep. I'm very deep into into the process of uh, working with paper. So that's why the residency at, at the Macall was 100% uh, focused in paper making, and how mm -hmm. I can create uh, a, a language of that can combine painting, collage, and um, and the mm -hmm. proper the proper paper building. Himself. Like, tell me, like, are you look at your paint, like, I don't know, sometimes it's, I have a mixed feeling, whether it's a collage or it is a painting, uh, which is uh, uh, in, the, in the form of a collage. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's sometimes hard to like, tell. You can paint some, yes, yeah, it's very hard to tell whether you use paints for that or it's a paper. I can, I can do, I can make you a, a fast uh, a short, oh, if you were uh, in your studio, that would be fantastic. Yeah, right if you could show us around and see the, if you could see the details, that would be very interesting. Like, as you can see here, it's um, our paintings. This is oil painting, painting, painting and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and pastel paintings. But right next to, I'm in the same time. I'm I'm working in those collages. So mm -hmm. this is this is paper paper collage. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I work uh -huh. with yeah. tons and tons. Uh -huh. So some paper different. you rip it, some some of it you color you 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 cut it. Exactly, I mean mm -hmm. I in in this case what I'm showing you it's all uh, uh, like cutted cutted paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those pieces are based in these uh, WhatsApp messages and these stories about. Um, this this interaction with especially with my with my family through the through the devices and the the long distance mm -hmm. 
situation. Mm -hmm. But right here, as you can see, there is another collage. This, for example, it's a paper pulp. So this mm -hmm. is, is this kind of mix that I've been doing in the, in the residency where I, where I make the paper pulp with the cotton mm -hmm. fibers and the mm. and the um, yeah, and the color interesting itself. texture. I think it's yeah. very highly absorbent as well. Yeah, but uh, uh, what you see, each color that you see here, it's a uh, it's a paper pulp differently. Mm -hmm. So I create every color, and I just uh, apply them as a collage. But at the end, when when the paper pulp gets dry, dry you get a whole sheet of paper. So. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting mix between collage and painting that I'm being, uh, that's what I've been doing in the, in, during the res residency. Uh, this is a small example, but I have done mm -hmm. like massive. So what, what is the li largest you, you have big pieces made of, with this, with the, with using this, this paper? With this technique, with this technique yeah. I, I have done one from, uh, I think it's like around two meters by two meters because also I, uh, something that it's very, uh, very particular in my work. It's the scale, like the use of the scale. And, so uh, you like, fragility. if you like, if you do murals, you must be loving big scale painting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's it's hard to translate that language, that language, from from the public space and from that kind of scales into mm -hmm. a into a studio work. And it's also yeah. something that mm -hmm. always are in my mind, and uh, it's. Uh, it's something that I've been thinking since since I mm -hmm. make the jump from one one part to the other, like public space or private space, and it's uh, also a big uh, it's a, a important part of uh, my way of thinking or the way of thinking my my own work, like this mm -hmm. interaction between the public space yeah. and, the, and the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like when talking about the murals, I'm very curious. What technique do you use to achieve this beautiful effect of transparency and watercolor like painting mm -hmm. look like? Yeah, in, in those in those murals, mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. um, most of them are from from the last. I mean, I've been doing that series from the last uh, several years also. But uh, mm -hmm. I've been working with uh, especially with tar, that is uh, petrol in some point like. Uh, Asphalt and petrol, yeah, mm -hmm. mixed with ga with gasoline. It was a very wow. explosive combination for. Uh, That's for what I I thought. Yes, that's a very safe material yeah. to use. <laughs> <laughs> but for make murals, especially in the way that I was considering muralism since then, that for me was this act of um, this act of ephemeral ephemeral work that I was very interested, especially in my murals. This material gave me that that um, that that perspective, you no? Know? Like uh, to work with a very cheap and very raw material that is connected in some point with the public space at the same time because it's asphalt. Yeah. So how 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 yeah? And how do you use? How do you choose the location, the space, and and the and how is it interconnected with the image you display on the wall? I mean, especially in in those ones are 100% um, um, like self-produced. Most of them in my, in, my, in my city, in Buenos Aires, where I was very free to paint. Buenos Aires always was a very free and very open city to paint in the public space. Mm -hmm. And that's, really, that's something that really helped us in develop new languages. It was, it was not just a kind of an illegal, illegal fact. You can just mm -hmm. go and paint and the people was very open for that. So I was just choosing and picking. So you don't somehow. need any permission. You don't need to I, apply anything to the government. No, no. you can just go and paint. <laughs> just take a building and paint whatever exactly. you want. Yeah, during that That's time nice. was, uh, was, was a paradise because uh, it was, uh, it, Buenos Aires is a massive city, is a really big, sometimes could be really chaotic, and the fact that uh, you as an artist uh, share your time and your experience in the public space with mm -hmm. people, it's something that the people really enjoy it. So for us was, yeah. uh, was a very, very good dialogue. Of course that it was a, mm -hmm. like illegal graffiti and illegal muralism at the same time. Mm 
-hmm. But in, in my case, I was more concentrated in the, in the interaction with the community and the interaction with the city. So those murals, most of them based on, um, on petrol and also based on brick or on, on coal or also in dust. It was a, a series of very ephemeral murals that it was not only, not only based in the image that I was doing, also was based in the interaction that I have with the surrounding area. And mm -hmm. it's something that I, I was really interested about it. But of course, when all this, uh, this, this explosion of uh, street art and mural festivals start to happen, we start to lose in some point because of mm -hmm. the production, because of the, the logistics. Yeah, uh, so it, it must be very was, expensive, yes, to, to paint one wall. There's so many materials involved. You need to uh, use yeah, special lifts. equipment, lifts, uh, which is, yeah. uh, I'm sure it costs a fortune to hire. So yeah, that, that creates a huge uh, change in the, in, the, in the movement that I, I, was, uh, I was very aware because I was lucky enough to be uh, very participate into that process also really uh, very into the traveling and uh, participating in different projects around the world that from one side was amazing for the for the for the experience but at the same time and seeing as in perspective i feel that um i lost a little bit of the connection with uh, with the public space in some point that i have it especially in my city and that creates that, at least in my case, I've been focused more into the studio and in, in another kind of works. I mean, I, I'm still working a lot in the public space, but it, with another perspective. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what was the most exciting experience in art you ever had? And what kind mm -hmm. of challenges are you dealing with during your creative process? And how do you overcome them? I mean, I have very mixed, mixed experience, uh, and I can and I and I can do a, a kind of ping pong between what the experience in the public space during the festivals and also some projects with the institutions that also are have been very interesting. Um, one for for me, one of the most me memorable was uh, one time uh, painting in Turkey in Istanbul. Uh, that was in 2013, and was during the time of the big protest and manifestations because of the Taksim Park uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And I was right there. So it was such an uh, extreme experience for me as a visitor. And also for me as, a, as an artist working in the public space in such a delicate situation. So for me it was very, it fits me with a lot of ideas and a lot of concept for working that, in, that, mm -hmm. in that specific world. But at the same time, I feel all the, all the historic situation that I was happening in the city, it was overwhelmed. So uh, the same people in the production that was helping us to make the, the mural, uh, it was fighting for the, for the rights and the situation in the city. So, and I was right there in the middle. So that experience for me was very, was very, very, very important. Yeah. And also reminds me a lot of situation that happened in my country maybe 10, 20 years ago. So I create those bridges of uh, different feelings. Uh, and that only can happen when you travel into a place and you really get involved into, into the community. And through the murals, it was something that, uh, that, that, uh, that I really achieved and it really helps me. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy. I mean, I've been able to, to travel everywhere also experience so, for example yeah tell me yeah so i i guess you you prefer to do the murals or you prefer to be in your studio and create artworks mm. there so because it's so different it's and, so different uh, yeah so that's what, what is that's your why, favorite part that's why for me always was this kind of um like double identity career no like uh i can compare one another both has a different experience, different points of view, different points of thinking, even, it, even, through my, even to myself, uh, the way that I approach to the public space or the way that I approach into my work in the, in the public, in the studio. So even, even through that, um, even the book that I, that I have done about my work is, is definitely two books that are separated. Uh, so for me, are very hard to compare. 
both of them give me very different perspectives. Uh, one thing that I really like of, um, of the murals is, is that mm -hmm. fact. It's, it's not only about my, my work and my self-experience of painting, it's also that interaction that I create with, uh, with, with just the, 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 the nearby. And you space. share with, with people living in the neighborhood and they can yeah. see it every day and enjoy it. And especially totally. if it has meaning, meaning and uh, by the way, you use a lot of minotaur, minotaur is mm -hmm. in, in your art. So what does it mean to you and uh, what is the concept behind that? I mean, I've been using uh, these mythological creatures uh, since a couple of years. Uh, it, was, it was also a transition from a kind of work that I've been doing in the studio based, especially in, the, um, in ritualism, uh, around violence, especially in Latin America, for example, like hooliganism mm -hmm. in Argentina or Brazil, how that like kind of ritual violence is into kind of into a, a DNA in terms of uh, how society interact with this this violence. And when I was when I was thinking in translate that that uh, series or that subject into the public space. I confront the the fact of the the interaction with the people. No, the people that are not necessarily interested in see or deal with violence uh, in in his mm -hmm. kind of pure in his yeah. pure uh, sense. So I I starting to use most of them uh, animals or or mythologic mythological creatures mm -hmm. just to talk about the, that uh, those thoughts. And in some point, then then they became as a, as a signature in some point, you know, like uh, the same as the as the tiger mask that I use from mm -hmm. uh, Mexican cultures, mm -hmm. also became like as you can see there. Yeah, uh, who, I, is I, 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 uh, who is that? Who is that? I mean, <laughs> also it's it's based in um, in a tradition in south of Mexico that it's mm -hmm. uh, violence involved. Uh, it's a pre-Hispanic uh, ritual that involves uh, physical violence for farming and for growing, and and because I also live uh, live part of my life in Mexico, I was also interested. I in, love in, Mexico. In, Where about yeah, did you live there? I live in Mexico City, but I I've been everywhere beautiful. there. Beautiful. And I, part of my heart is also in Mexico, so uh, I I be I've been very influenced by Mexican culture. A lot, mm -hmm. and I pick up those, uh, especially rituals. Sometimes some of them are pre-Hispanic, like the Tigrada, and some of them are more like, like um, contemporary, like uh, hooliganism, especially in Argentina. And I just mm -hmm. pick pick them, and and I create my own my own story. That's why the mythological facts are surrounded, um, and through them. I, I create a whole series. That so any was, new it, heroes in your mind that you're going to use in your artworks? Any yes. <laughs> I, I've, I've been very, especially during the lockdown, I've been reaching a lot more into the Argentinian history, especially in the last 30 years of the history in my country. They are very particular. And I've been uh, organizing and creating new kind of myth mythologies through them, like using our history uh, and creating this uh, this new perspective of the of the Argentinian history. But it's something that I'm still thinking and making sketches. I just have super small sketches around yeah, can here. Can you show us this? Mm -hmm. These are our oil painting sketches. All this book is full so of them. So first you do a sketch, and if you like it, then you make a big big piece. Exactly. Most of them I work, um, yeah, oil, oil pastels and oil painting in a very small scale. And then mm -hmm. I go little by little growing into the scale. And some of them I, I transform or into murals or into collage murals that sometimes are the same size as a wall, but making with paper. So it's uh, it's all your, your, your sculptures are also very interesting, and the, the materials you, you use, the combination of the materials, it's quite unique. Yeah, it's, it's also like, very influenced by stage design and theater. 
that way of use the sculpture. Yes, you that. you dress your sculptures as uh, I, I, I maybe <laughs> it was a minotaur or someone wearing these blue pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was very interesting sculpture. <laughs> yeah, with the sculptures, I have um, I can consider it like two series. One of mm -hmm. them is more based in the in the same in the same series or the same themes that I've been that I'm explaining to you about these myths and these creatures. But through my approach with the sculpture, I also I also been thinking in um, in in how monuments affect us in the in the way how monuments create our memory in terms of societies or in terms of communal identities. Mm -hmm. So I have a series of sculpture based in um, monuments of Buenos Aires uh, that I reconfigurate them and I use them with uh, with different materials. This can, this idea of desacralized monuments in some in some point. Then all these uh, these uh, last situations happens with uh, monuments all mm -hmm. around the world about monument, monuments of colonialism yeah. or racism. That was very interesting for me how the way that it could be resignificate those monuments also so yeah, any thoughts means... about public public art sculptures yeah 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 so I, I've, been, I've been doing i've been doing something so, something mm -hmm. like that but reinterpreting some monuments uh, especially monuments in argentina most of them working with uh yeah polyestyrene or uh very cheap and light materials uh monuments that i've been just carrying carrying them around the city so um that's that's a, a kind of work that I that I very interesting and in keep doing, but of course it's uh, sometimes it's hard because of the the size and the difficulty of uh, of work mm -hmm. in the uh, in especially right now in the public space with all this situation is something that I have to put uh, in a standby for for a while, but I've been mm -hmm. working in small things also. That's very good. And it's good to be back home. So yeah. finally. <laughs> you can't imagine. Exactly. So and the last question, what is the next big project you are going to work at or a big exhibition we can expect from you? I'm I've been I'm working also as a as an artist but also a half curator of a show in Madrid in a Chrysler Gallery, I think in October. Uh, that is based in um, figurative painters from Argentina. Uh, I've been choosing different, um, especially figurative uh, contemporary painters from from my country, but also focusing Argentinian artists that are um, based in foreign countries, especially in Spain and Germany too. And it's uh, it's also kind of a second step of the exhibition that I have done in, in North Carolina a couple months ago also based in the, these intimacy situations between uh, as, as, a, as a foreigner mm -hmm. in, the, in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. So that's a project that I've been working right now also with Alejandra from the gallery. And then I have uh, some projects in Argentina that hopefully if the pandemic allows me, uh, I'm very excited to do because it's also um, uh, based in the, in the, in the large scale uh, paper pulp collages that I really want to do it. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be this year, but because of this situation, we have to postpone for next year. And uh, more or less is what I'm concentrating right now. Then it's, um, yeah, then it's figuring out how is life into this situation. Yes, <laughs> that's so true. But you've got amazing ideas and uh, I wish you all the best and uh, Thank you. continue to be as creative as you are and uh, impress us with the new artworks, paintings, murals, sculptures, <laughs> looking forward for new creations. Yeah, definitely. No, pandemic is pandemi not going to stop us at all. We're yeah, going to transform. Stay safe. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. Thank you for joining my live session. <laughs> Thank uh, you.